Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi and welcome to another video of uh, mathematics. So, to, so starting this video, I'm going to start uh, another series of uh, mathematics that is uh, engineering or basic engineering for basic sorry basic calculus for engineering. Okay, basic calculus for engineering. So, I will not talk about uh, topics of calculus like uh, differentiation and integration in the series of mathematics for matriculation because because in my opinion it kind of uh, redundant to 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 teach or to talk about differentiation in uh, in this in the uh, in mathematics for matriculation and basic and basic calculus for engineering so I, so I will omit the topics of calculus, topics of calculus in the, uh, in the series of mathematics for matriculation. So students who are, who want to, who wants to study or who wants to know uh, a little bit more about uh, topics like differentiation and integration, you can, uh, you can go into this series. Okay. So before we start talking about uh, topics like uh, differentiation and integration we should talk about or we should learn about we should uh, we should understand about a topics or a concept uh, limits okay in order to talk or in order to understand the concept of limit we need to talk about uh, rates of change rates of change okay uh, I think student in physics you already learned you have learned about uh, average speed and instantaneous speed okay you have learned uh, average speed and instantaneous speed okay uh, if you review again if you review again speed is actually the rate of change in terms the rate of change of distance over time this uh, speed is rate of change of distance over time that is speed okay so we have two kind of speed average speed and instantaneous speed average speed refers to uh, the rate of change of uh, distance in specific time interval where instantaneous speed is the speed of the of a moving object of a moving moving body at specific time that is instantaneous speed Okay, so instant, uh, sorry, speed is actually one example of rate of change. Speed is actually one example of rate of change. So we should not go talk uh, a little bit, uh, we should not talk uh, sophisticated example of rate of change. We should just use whatever concept they already known. For example, speed. Okay, so we go to uh, average rate of change. Okay, so let's say, for example, let's say you have a function fx. We have a function of x. Okay, we call it fx. Okay, so the function has the curve, which is the blue curve in the figure. Okay, and then you have specific interval on the x domain, on the domain x. Means uh, it, that is the domain, uh, the interval from x1 to x2 x1 x2 okay that is the interval speci the specified interval okay so we want to know we want to know what is the rate of change of this function with respect to x over the specified interval over the specified interval so first of all we should mark the points on the curve the two points of the curve in terms are uh, in the form of coordinate pairs, coordinate point, uh, pair points, pair points. So we have here, so we have here x1, uh, x1 and function of x1. And then we have x2 and function of x2. So this is our two pair points on the function. Okay, so we want to know what is the average rate of change, uh, sorry, what is the average rate of change of this function? Over the specified over the specified interval x1 x1 to x2, so we should what what should we do is we draw a line, we draw a line that is the white line, 
this line intersects the intersects the function on those two points. That is the line that we call is that we call it as second line. Second, second line. Okay. After that, we want to we want to to calculate the average rate, the, the average rate of change. The way to calculate the rate the average rate of change for over uh, over this specified interval of this function is by calculating the gradient or or the slope of the second line. The slope of the second line. So we have, I think, in coordinate geometry, or we already learned how to calculate gradient when we have two points. Two points. We want to know what is the slope or what is the gradient of the line that connecting between two points okay so using that formula using that formula we arrive at this formula the average rate of change of y of function of x with respect to x over the interval from x1 to x2 is given by okay so we have the symbol the symbol for average rate of change delta y over delta x delta y over delta x always means always refers to average rate of change okay so what is the formula of uh, delta y over delta x according to formula of gradient uh, according to gradient of a line so we take this this point this point we take the difference between this point and this point divided by the difference of this point and this point okay so we have the formula is function of x2 minus function of x1 divided by x2 over x1 divided by x2 over x1 so we can see that this formula really similar to the formula for gradient of a line that is actually what we do actually that, that is actually what we do here what we do what we are doing to calculate the average rate of change by using by drawing the second line that intersects between intersects the curve intersects the function on those two points and then we calculate the gradient of the second line of the slope of the second line okay so let's take an example let's take an example find the average rate of change of the function fx equals to x squared or minus 2x plus 5 over the given interval from negative 2 to 3 Okay, so if we are using, if we are going to use, because we, of course we are going to use this formula. Okay, so we have x2, uh, sorry, we have x1, which is this number, negative 2, and uh, x2 is equals to 3. But we, what we don't have here is function of x1 and function of x2. So before we, before we are going to use this formula, we need to find first f of x1 and f of x2. Okay, so when x1 equals to negative 2, function of x1 is uh, negative 2 squared minus 2 multiply negative 2 plus 3 equals to, equals to uh, 2 squared, 2 squared 44. Multi minus 2 multiply 2 so minus eh, sorry negative 2 multiply negative 2 4 so 4 plus 4 8 4 plus 4 8 and then plus 3 okay i think if you want to if you want to calculate if you if you want if you want to evaluate in your head just use calculator don't worry so we have negative 2 squared minus 2 multiply negative 2 plus 3 so we have f of x1 is 11 and then we go to x2 x2 is 3 so we substitute 3 into the function so we have f of x2 is 3 squared minus minus 2 multiply 3 plus 3 okay so we have 3 3 so we have 6 so we have here 6 okay so we have here 6 all right so what we so it, then when we have the value of fx1 and fx2 we have when, when we have this uh, both of these values 
and then we and then we substitute into this formula so average rate of change delta y or maybe we should delta f over delta x is f2 f of x2 minus f of x1 so 6 minus 11 6 minus 11 over x2 minus x1 so 3 minus negative 2 so we have we uh, so using the calculator so we have 6 minus 11 over 3 minus negative 2 we have negative 1 so the so the average rate of change of fx over the given interval from negative 2 to 3 is 1 eh, negative 1 or in other words or in other words the gradient of the second line that intersects the function on point on points negative 2 and negative x equals to negative 2 and x equal to negative 3 is 1 that is what we are calculating here okay all right so so for this for for you for you the students uh, please try to calculate or to find the answer for the, the second example okay so the way to calculate is similar to the previous example so i would like to you for you if you want to try you can pause this video and we will come back uh, to discuss the answers to, to discuss the answer okay so we come back so now to find the average rate of change of the function fx equals to negative cosine of x plus 5 over the given interval from negative pi to 3 pi over 2 okay so okay okay first thing first if you want to use calculator you want to make sure that you change your the mode of your calculator from degree mode to gradient mode because why why gradient mode because we we, we can see from the interval pi and negative pi 3 pi over 2 ah uh, it no more no more degree and we have pi so obviously we are going to uh, obviously the the interval is in radian so if you want to calculate the the value of f x1 and x, f of x2 we should change our calculator to radian mode first okay but i already changed my my my, my the mode in my calculator to radian so we can we can straightforward uh, find uh, function of x1 and function of x2 so our x1 is negative pi x2 is 3 pi over 2 3 pi over 2 so we have when x equals to negative pi f of x1 f of x1 is f of x1 is negative cosine negative pi plus 5 so we have negative cosine sorry negative cosine negative pi plus 5 so we have equals to 6 6 okay and then we go into x equals to 2 x equals to 2 sorry i should move here so x equals to 2 equals to 3 pi over 2 so f of x2 is negative cosine of 3 pi over 2 plus 5 okay so 3 pi 3 pi over 2 so we have the value 5 okay so now we have the f of x1 f of x2 so we can substitute both x uh, all all of this term x1 x2 f of x1 and f of x2 into the into the formula so we have delta f over delta x is f of x2 minus f of x1 so 5 
minus 6 5 minus 6 over x2 minus x1 so 3 pi over 2 minus pi or should we say it minus negative pi Haha, <laughs> minus negative pi okay and then uh, because we have <laughs> because we have fraction in the denominator a uh, uh, denominator yes so i would like to first we evaluate both the uh, numerator and denominator so for numerator 5 minus 6 is negative 1 and then 3 pi over 2 minus negative 5 means 3 pi over 2 plus pi so we have because pi is 2 pi over 2 so 3 plus 2 is 5 so we have 5 pi over 2 and then because we have denominator is in the uh, denominator is a fraction so we can change the division operation into multiplication and then we invert the numerator we interchange the numerator and denominator uh, after that so negative 1 multiply 2 over 5 pi so we have negative 2 sorry negative 2 over 5 pi or or negative 2 over 5 pi or if you want to if you want to uh, using this decimal up to 4 significant figures negative 0 0.1 273 although actually i prefer to this, this this answer because the answer is the exact answer <laughs> this is exact answer the decimal answer the decimal the decimal answer is not the is that doesn't represent the exact value of the exact answer okay so i prefer to use this one okay so i think i need to check back because mm, negative pi yes negative pi Negative pi, okay. Negative pi, okay. Mm hmm. Oh, sorry. Uh, ne so negative cosine negative pi plus five. Yes, negative six. Yes, and then negative cosine three pi over two plus. Uh, sorry equals to 5 yes okay equals to 5 and then 5 over 6 yes negative 1 and then pi 3 pi over 2 minus negative pi we have 5 pi over 2 yes 5 pi over 2 yes all right so this is our answer so this is our our answer for the second example so this actually how we calculate average rate of change and exactly how we calculate the average speed of a moving of, of a moving body this the same thing that we do here the same thing that we do here only that in our in our video we discuss the core concept of the uh, average speed which is average rate of change because actually speed is rate of change of distance over time that is that that that's that it is that is speed but here we are talking generally average rate of change average rate of change this is more the general general topic of uh, that we are discussing about okay so since we have discussed the average rate of change okay so obviously obviously because average rate of change doesn't doesn't represent uh, the speed for every part or for every point okay for, for example with if you if you want to talk about speed average rate of speed doesn't means that that is the speed of the moving object at, at uh, for every time obviously for, obviously over time this the this the speed will be different maybe for at one second this this, this the speed is two second over uh, two two meter over second two meter per second or after five after, but, but then after 5 seconds the, the speed increases or decreases okay so average rate of change 
doesn't really tell us the rate of change at specific point at specific point okay so in order for us to know the specific rate of change at specific point at specific point okay what we should do here what we should do here we go back to this this what we talk about average rate of change average rate of change okay sorry average rate of change okay so okay let's say that we want to know the uh, the rate of change at this point at this point uh, x1 f of x1 what we should do what we should do okay going back from this uh, this formula okay going back okay what we should do here is in order for us to to can calculate uh, to calculate the rate of change the rate of change at uh, point x1 uh, what we should do here is we should change the distance of delta x we should change the distance uh, we should change the value of delta x means the distance between x1 and x2 we want to make that uh, the value of x2 when we move it become closer x2 becomes closer closer and closer to x1 so we will have different so uh, the second over if we move the second line from uh, point x2 we move it uh, closer to x1 it will become sorry i should use different color like this where the line only touches uh, uh, the, the line touches the function at only one point uh, when we decrease the value of delta x or we decrease the value of h here we define it as h when we make it the value of h closer to zero closer to zero okay we will have the line of we call it tangent line where tangent line is the line where it touch it touches the function or it touches the curve at only one point uh, at only one point when we have tangent line when we have after after we have the tangent line we can calculate the rate of change at that point at x1 by calculating the gradient of the tangent line or the slope of the curve uh, when i when i when i when i mention slope of the curve means tangent to the curve tangent line to the curve tangent line to the curve at x1 x1 okay now when we have uh, now when we have tangent line we can calculate the specific rate of change or instantaneous rate of change at x1 okay so we define the following we define the slope of the curve or we define the tang the slope of the tangent line at the curve y of the curve y or equals to fx at point x1 f of x1 is still we are using delta y over delta x but because we already use it, we already change instead of x x2 x2 minus x1 we change it to uh h because we want to we want to we want to calculate what is the slope of the line when h becomes uh, closer to zero okay uh, many things that we change for example f of x2 we change it to f of x1 plus h because x x2 is actually x2 is actually x1 plus h is h that we get then then we get x2 okay so we change back x2 into x1 plus h so we have the following formula delta y over delta x is equal to f of x1 plus h minus f of uh, minus f of, uh, f of h x1 over h okay this one i should i think i we should we should let, let it where h not equal to zero h must not equal to zero because h now in the denominator when denominator is zero we cannot calculate the we cannot calculate the formula anymore okay so we go into the example find the slope of the curve of the equation fx equals to x squared minus 10 at the point p 1 11 okay if i want if i want to refresh this question means that find the gradient of the tangent line 
of the equation fx equals to x squared plus 10 at point P11. That is actually what the question means. Okay, so first thing first, first thing first, we need to find f of x1 plus h and f of x1. Okay, so when, okay, so we have the following here. So f, f of x1, sorry, so because x1 is 1, so 1 plus h means that we substitute uh, we change we substitute x into 1 plus h so 1 plus h squared plus 10 so we have 1 plus 2 h plus h squared plus 10 and then we simplify the expression so we have x squared plus 2 h plus 11 plus 11 and then we calculate for f of 1 f of 1 so we substitute x to into 1 so we have 1 squared plus 10 so 1 squared still 1 still gives us 1 so 1 plus 10 equals to equals to 11 now we can use the formula m sorry delta Delta F Delta F over Delta X equals to F of 1 plus H minus F of 1 so H squared plus 2 H plus 11 minus 11 over H over H okay so now positive 11 eliminates negative 11 so 11 minus 11 0 so what's left here is h squared minus uh, plus 2 h so since in the numerator both of them has the same factor so, uh, have the common factor h so that factor that common factor h can be can be eliminated by the denominator h so we will have here instead of h squared become h only here to h become 2 so we have our 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 answer here is h plus two. Okay, so how to find the how to find the slope of the curve at uh, 11, uh, 1 11 Okay, here is our argument. Here is our next step. Okay, so when h approaching zero, approaching zero, delta f over delta x equals to two. 2 okay obviously 2 obviously 2 <laughs> because if you want to start from h3 then 2 then 1 then 0 so when h equals to 3 3 plus 2 equals to 6 and then h equals to 2 so 2 plus 2 4 and then 1 h equals to 1 so 1 plus 2 3 and then 0 0 plus 2 3 2 so from 6 after that 4 after that 3 after that 0 so it, the value the value of delta f over delta x decreases to 0 eh, sorry decreases to 2 so that that's what we mean by when h approaching 0 sorry when h approaching 0 delta f over delta x approaching 2 so our answer is the slope of the curve or the of the gradient of the tangent line at 11, 1.11 is to okay that is the first example okay so now uh, I hope uh, okay so now uh, please try to answer this answer this uh, question this example find the slope of the curve y equals to x cubed plus 3x minus 1 and the equation of the tangent line at P negative 2 5 so now so now in our example we have two things that we need to do first find the gradient of the tangent line uh, slope of the curve mean gradient of the tangent line at point P and then we, after that we need to establish or we need to derive the equation of that tangent line uh, okay so uh, you can pause this video and try to answer try to solve this example
Okay. Alright. So, before we can derive the equation of tangent line, first we need to have the gradient of tangent line. So, in order to find the gradient of tangent line, we need to calculate the slope of the curve at point P. Okay, so we have our x1 is 2. Our x1 is negative 2. So, first thing first, f of negative 2 plus h. So, we have, if we substitute x into from in the equation, we have h minus 2 cubed plus 3 h minus 2 minus 1 okay why i change from negative 2 plus h to h minus 2 because actually i i prefer to write the first term is positive so we make the positive term in front of the negative term okay that's why i i rewrite it again as i rewrite it as h minus 2 okay so in order to expand this term we need to we, we need to remind back the pascal triangle so we have 1 1 1 1 to 1 for quadratic for quadratic 1 3 3 1 is 4 cubic here cubic so we have a cube plus a sorry 3 3a cube b plus 3ab cube plus b cube b squared is 3ab squared okay sorry not cube okay so we have here h squared s cube okay and then 3 h squared multiply negative 2 so 3 multiply negative 2 6 h squared after that we have 3 multiply h multiply negative 2 squared so negative 2 squared is 4 so 4 multiply 3 is positive 12 h and then we have uh, b cube negative 2 cube so negative 2 cube is negative 8 negative 8 okay and then oops oops why hmm something wrong here it does not erase. I want to erase this one. Okay, now we can erase. Okay. So after that, okay, why? Okay, why? What happened here? <laughs> okay. Okay. And then we 3 multiply h. So 3 positive 3 h. So, 3 multiply negative 2 equals to negative 6 minus 1. So, we simplify this expression. So, we have for terms that has h cube only 1. h cube only. After that, quadratic. H negative 6 h. H. And then for h power 1, 12 h plus 3 h. So, we have positive 15 h. After that, constant, negative 8 minus 6 minus 1. So, 6 minus, negative 6 minus 1 is 7. So, negative 8 minus negative 7 equals to negative 5, negative 15. Okay. For f of negative 2, f of negative 2, we just substitute the value of negative 2 into x. So, we have negative 2 cube plus 3 multiply negative 2 minus 1 so we have negative 2 cube is negative 8 ne 3 multiply negative 2 is negative 6 minus 1 the same as before so we have 15 okay and then we find the slope in terms of h negative uh, delta f delta f over delta x is f of negative 2 plus h or minus f of negative 2 so h cube minus 6 h squared plus 15 h minus 15 minus 
negative 15 over h ok so negative 15 cancel out with negative negative 15 no more constant so what's left in the denominator in, uh, in the numerator is terms that has const, uh, that has term that has unknown h ok since all of this all of the term in the numerator has common one common factor h so with that common factor can or it can be eliminated with the denominator so we left here h squared minus 6 h plus 15 so our answer here is h squared minus 6 h plus 15 and then we want to know what is the gradient of this of the tangent line okay what is the gradient of tangent line so when h approaching 0 when h approaching 0 delta f over delta x approaching 15 because h squared obviously will become 0 negative 6 s obviously become 0 so what's left is positive 15 okay that's so when h is approaching 0 delta f over delta x approaching 15 so we have the gradient of the tangent line m is 15 okay now we can derive the equation of the tangent line okay using point p using this 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 form of formula y minus y1 equals to m x minus x1 okay so this is our x1 this is our y1 so we substitute back y minus again what f m equals to 15 multiply x minus negative 2 so minus negative 2 plus 2 plus 2 so we have y equals to 15x plus 30 plus 5 so lastly we have y equals to 15x plus 35 done so this is our slope of the curve this is our equation of the tangent line okay so i hope the student understand what is actually rate of change what is actually rate of change because by using by using one obvious example speed <laughs> one obvious example speed so when we calculate when, when we calculate when we calculate the average rate of change in our example we are calculating the average speed of a moving object and then when we talk about slope of the curve means that we are calculating the instantaneous instantaneous rate of change at specific point in our example it means that we are calculating instantaneous speed at specific time only that only that okay when we understand when we understand the concept of uh, rate of change and tangents to the curve we will not have actually any difficulty when we learn uh, the concept of average speed and instantaneous speed because in my personal experience i always have uh, trouble of understanding uh, instantaneous speed until i learn calculus <laughs> until i learn calculus in doing my matriculation doing my foundation okay so she uh, we will we will uh, we will meet again in the next video uh, so see you again inshallah assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh